that a thing? Yes. Yeah, I talked to him before. I'll just I'll say it. Well, that was definitely a lesson involving childhood. One personal childhood. And I'm glad you made it here. That was your welcome addition to this group. Our next speech is by Al Davis, and his evaluator is Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett, will you please give the objectives for Al Davis? Sure. So Al Davis is giving a speech titled, How to Have a Successful Yard Sale. It's five to seven minutes out of the manual. And his objectives are to present some useful information from a perspective many may not have had, namely from someone who has done many yard sales, to relax and to entertain. Before we introduce Al, let me give his response to the theme. Not all who prevent, present friendship, profess friendship, are being sincere. Yet there are those who are, that is, I'll listen from Catholic. Please welcome Al Davis. Thank you. Welcome to Ryan. And thank you, Mike, for your for your story. It's interesting today that both people who are up here have a story of recovery to tell. A long time ago after I stopped, stopped drinking and was going to AA, I had a lot of free time on the weekends, time that usually was spent in gym though, so I had to figure out a constructive thing to do with my time. I didn't gravitate toward punk rock, because I don't even know that it had been invented back then. It was a long time ago. It was before you were born that. I started going to yard sales. I'm looking for bargains. I've always been a bargain hunter. At one of these yard sales, I found some Cooper's tools, antique barrel making tools, and I figured, well, gee, if I can make some money, if I can buy these at the right price and sell them, I can probably make some money. So I did. I paid hundred dollars for the stuff. A few weeks later, full, sold it for two seventy-five. And this burgeoned into a full-time business and a number of retail stores over quite a long period of time. I've also sold in flea markets and I've had many, many yard sales. So I'm uniquely qualified in this regard. Why do you want to have a yard sale? It's a lot of work. You're standing out in the weather all day long. It's, well, first of all, it's a good way to get rid of stuff. Now, you may be in a situation in your life where you're moving, going through a divorce, thinking about getting through, going through a divorce, going out of town somewhere to liquidate the estate of a relative. There's a lot of reasons to have a yard sale. And if you want to do it, there's things you can do which will help you maximize the amount of money you get. First thing is, what time do you start? My suggestion is 8 in the morning. It seems like an, un like an ungodly hour in the morning to start, but believe me, there are people out a whole lot earlier than that. Second, don't put out signs that say no early birds. That's nothing, nothing more turns people off than no early birds, because the early birds are often the dealers, and these are the people with the most money. Why push people away? Take out ads. Put an, ad on put an ad on Craigslist. That's really the only place you need to advertise. People don't look at the newspapers very much anymore and you'll be wasting your money. If you're placing an ad, make sure you take lots of pictures and describe the items reasonably well. Use bullet points. Don't use some long, long drawn out paragraphs because people won't read them. They're, they're, they're skimming. They're looking through the essence of what, what, what you have there. Don't go using words like great stuff, Lots of etc. These are meaningless words. They won't bring people to your sale. When you organize the stuff for the sale, what you want to do is, at least in my experience, is do this the day before. Sort things by price. Get a pile of dollar stuff, a pile of two dollar stuff, or five dollar stuff, ten, fifteen, and twenty. And then on the day of the sale, you put out tables or tarps and put up signs that say your choice a dollar, your choice two dollars, your choice whatever it happens to be. It's a whole lot, e it's, it's a, it seems counterproductive, but price tags don't really help you. You would think they would, 
but they don't. Because what you want to do is you want to open a, open a dialogue with, with the person there. You want to have a conversation. You want to chat them up a little bit. And that way you can often get them interested in more than just one thing. The other thing is it's very helpful to your customers to know what the prices are. <coughs> now, you will find very often, though, the people will come up to you and they'll point at an item on the table with right next to it with a sign that says your choice of dollar and they'll say, how much is this? <laughs> People often don't read signs, but this gives you the chance to explain to them what the system is, and they, they very often will be able to figure it out. Let's talk about value for a second. We all have things around the house that have that are full of memories, evocative of childhood. Did you hear that right now? Okay. <laughs> and the fact that something is my personal heirloom, my family treasure, and of incredible significance to me doesn't, find, doesn't mean that somebody else will find, will find it that same way. It's just a piece of stuff. The only one that pays for sentimental or emotional attachment in the yard sale is the seller. There are things that hold their value in the secondhand world, there are things that don't. Things that hold their value like, are things like jewelry that have gold in them, tools hold their value, some electronics hold their value as long as they're not old. Things that don't hold their value are things like National Geographics. <laughs> so often at yard sales, I see piles of National Geographics. I've seen prices like $100 for a collection of National Geographics, which are worth their weight in scrap paper. <laughs> and to find out what the value of things are, it, takes, it can take a little research. Get on to ebay.com. If you aren't signed up for ebay.com, sign up, because that way you can search the sold prices. And you don't want to go by what people are asking for stuff. You want to go by what stuff is sold for. This is why looking at ads on Craigslist to find out what to price something at can be misleading, because you're assuming that the people who are putting the ads up know what they're doing. Nine times out of ten, they simply don't. But the sold prices on eBay will be a pretty good clue of what something is, somebody is willing to pay for a particular thing. Make sure you put up signs. Make sure you put up big signs, not little eight and a half by 11 signs that have every item itemized on the sign. Because remember, people are driving by. They need to see something quickly. They want to say, see yard sale, your address, and the start time. That's really all you need. And put these, stuff, put these signs up the day of the yard sale, not, not the night before. The reason for that is, if you're putting up a paper sign and the dew comes down, the sign is going to wither and curl around the pole at the time. So, also when you're putting up these signs, bring out a stapler as well as a roll of duct tape, because you're going to be you're going to be fastening things to to uh, to different to different items. The day of the sale, make sure you have plenty of change in your pocket, plenty of fives, tens, singles. Quarters. I wouldn't suggest taking any, any, uh, or selling anything for, for less than a quarter. And uh, don't use a change box. Work out of your pocket. You don't want somebody running off with a change box. It happens occasionally, and I've heard of it. And don't let people into your house to use the bathroom. They could be casing you out for setting you up for a burglary. There's a whole lot more I could tell you. In fact, we could be here all day, like <laughs> talking about punk rock. But I'll leave it at that. And I'll pass this back over to our two guys.